So the penultimate theme that I wanted to look at was the land grades, actually. Towards the end of the 20th century, several townships in Lewis moved to commemorate a series of land grades that occurred in the 19th century when local people were denied access to ancestral ground. A later land raid occurred when veterans from World War I <coughs> returned from the trenches to find themselves denied access to their lands in Valhalla. A remarkable series of monuments were designed by Will McLean, often in collaboration with his wife Marion Lehman, a hugely accomplished artist in her own right, and member of the Royal Scottish Academy, and local master stonemason John Crawford. These monuments have given the communities of Malallan, Gresh, Agnes and Reef a focus for the ongoing remembrance of the achievements of their forebears and will mark the landscape in perpetuity. As you will see in the exhibition, there are a series of descriptive panels showing the background stories and extensive visual archive material pertaining to the commemorative monuments that were created. Also, Will and Marion and Royal Scottish Academy past president Arthur Watson were at the forefront of the team who designed and implemented the build of the Poignant Monument commemorating the wreck of the troopship Isle at Hogmanay in 1918 with the loss of 208 returning World War I servicemen. It overlooks the beasts of home, the jagged rocks on which the Isle Air foundered within sight of Stormwater. The, the memorial was inaugurated in 2018 to great acclaim in the presence of Prince Charles and Nicola Sturgeon. And actually as a coda to this, Will and Marion are now actively involved in a similar memorial project up in Ahalibui, Lord Koyach, which aims to mark the resistance to evictions in Koyach in the mid-19th century. This is particularly exciting as it will be the first major artwork by Maclean and Leaven in Will's home area of Koyach. When Will was assembling the material for the show, I often visited his studio in Tapeport and on one occasion found him framing up various source materials, sketches, plans, maps, designs, photos, all relevant to the monuments. I actually spotted a tune amongst the material for the Baal and Cairn, which it turned out Will had not actually heard. It was composed by a local musician, Ian Kreiter, a fine five-robot accordionist, originally from Lower Babel on the Eye Peninsula of Lewis. And it commemorates the occasion in 1994 of the official unveiling of the Park Cairn of Allen. So I learnt it, and I added two parts, and it's here. I'm going to play it. <laughs>
Yeah, it's good tune, man. <laughs> right, we come to the end. All sorts of elements of the natural world of the Highlands are inextricably woven into many of those works. A myriad of naturalistic ideas inform his art. He observes that the ringneck herring fishermen could tell what type of fish were shoaling by the angle of the gannet's dive. He marvels that the people of St Kilda could rely almost entirely on seabirds for sustenance. He investigates the use by crofters of a perforated scallop shell to skim cream off milk. He admires the ocean going birds like the fulmar, the gannet, or the petrel, which would give companionship to sailors, anchorites, or wanderers. And bird skulls, feathers, bones, found objects, beachcomb wood, seaweed, boat wrecks, flotsam sought out in junkyards and antique shops, all may be cast, moulded, incorporated, and utilised in many of the artist's works. So I hope this has been an enjoyable reflection of the masterworks of the artist of the Highlands, Will McLean. And we're going to leave you with a selection of great pipe jigs, all named for birds typically found in the Highlands. The duck, the curlew and the seagull. So uh, many thanks to John and Alan here and, uh, and also our apologies from James. So we'll give you a final set of chips. Thank you.